Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for coming. I'm Cecil Giscombe, and with Christopher Christopher Miller, I, I curate the uh, the Fall Holloway Reading Series. Uh, welcome to the final event in the 19 or the, excuse me the 2013 um, <laughs> uh, Holloway. <laughs> and uh, tonight. Lise Gaston, a poet and first year student in our PhD program, will read. And uh, she will be followed by Tyrone Williams, our visitor from, from Cincinnati. He'll, uh, he will read from both uh, his, his books and, from, and some new work as, uh, as well. Next semester, the series will resume with readings by Rachel Blau Duplessis, Jory Graham, Marianne Morris, and Anne, Anne Boyer. Uh, so you come back in January. Um, Tyrone Williams will be introduced by Serena Lee. But at this moment, I yield the podium to Fräulein Hanna Erlenspiel. <laughs> who will introduce Lise Gaston. Fräulein. That was the first time anyone's ever said my name correctly. So, um, so first of all, thank you all for coming tonight. It's really nice to see everyone here. And um, I feel really honored to introduce Lise because although we've only known each other a couple months now, she's been a really wonderful friend inside and outside the classroom. She has a really centering presence in what has been the absolute chaos of grad school so far. And I was talking recently with another member of our cohort, and she said, you know, whenever Lee says something in class, I get the feeling she's making clear my own thoughts. And Lisa's poems, in a way, do the same thing. They're muscular illuminations, lights we can cling to. Grounded in the earth and in the body, Lisa's poems meditate on a nature where love is always longing, where death is never far off, always ready to lend its heavy weight to the things of this world. And yet, while Lisa's images often originate in the great, sometimes brutal, out there, her language quickly becomes that of the interiorized revelation, curling into itself in insistent eros-seeking, cloistered ecstasies, small, surreal mercies. The boundaries between self and world are made strange in a language that negotiates the space between invitation on the one hand and, as Emily Dickinson would say, more veil on the other. And we see in this space poems slick with intention uh, and they're poems to which I certainly return again and again. And uh, here is Lise. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. That was probably the most wonderful introduction I've ever been given. Thank you for that. Um, thank you, Christopher, and all the organizers for inviting me to read here. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to read with Tyrone Williams tonight. I'm going to read uh, just a handful of, um, of poems that run from Vancouver to Montreal and um, places that I've spent a lot of time in, I guess. Wow. <laughs> and um, hopefully I can be heard above the wind. This first one is Vision of Death. Vancouver, January 2011. Construction to begin on a home for the dying. A 15-bed hospice near the university. But neighbors tighten their lips, condo owners murmur into phones, pollution, harm to our children, property values. They'd have to keep their blinds shut, sure of what they'd see. Beds hitched to the sidewalk, rasping bodies shoveled into a gilt building, flowers thrown onto their juddering limbs, hard moaning replacing the sound of wind through fir trees, dogwood blossoms blooming out in bed sores, stench of flesh betraying flesh, the unendless regulatory antechamber of delights. Mulch and pines succumb to pine scented air fresheners, freshening bedpans swill in the clotted metal of coughed up blood, lawns peeling 
peeling up like skin off lips, the opioid sun recoiling, a pin in the sky, the sky rent with portent, seraphim and lions from the book of Armagh, raging, winged and checkered, fingered with opposable thumbs, and the manes of the dying splayed over pillows, collective breath knocking the ribs of the building through the night. The neighbors successfully petitioned. Building has been postponed. Winter deer. Between split cedar rounds and a dormant lawn mower, her fur gray and brown and tufted with hunger or disease, her head twisted backwards over her body. Knees loose, I stare through the shed's wood slats at the nested figure, the spindled bone of her legs, her eye open, the glare of her long face. Is this useful? I've pinned her, etched an irreversibly curled body, the cramped space, her neck always broken in its turn. My father carries her hunched into woods for the ravens. Will her limbs splay when she's lifted, or will she stay a folded bundle in his arms? Still, I denied her smell, chose the colors of her fur. I opened her eye. I couldn't tell in the half-light, refused to move closer, but for clarity, I write, it's open, a fine staring. Admit it. I wouldn't have looked but for the weight death could bring to a line. It's always slick with intention, this pen again and again. I've got a lot of dead animals in these poems, I'm realizing now. It just continues in this next one, which is called Vision of Love. Tell me how the day enters. A river, yes, and on its banks a rat, bats back slicked open, stuck in its blood to the gravel, squirming and squeaking. Koi scales shining line the paths, one orange cheek plate glints its currency. The fish, thick muscles of sun, swim under the ferryman's boat, flit long tails, half their faces chewed away and water slurring in. One sleek otter head streams through, sun muscle flaps in its jaws, mouthing a panic of lost sound. And the night? What's the night like? The river rushes full with birds, their beaks open and eyes black and the cold water rushing. Starlings clutter the current, their little pointed tails spiking the surface like twigs. Cormorants flow by choking, webbed feet splayed. River of silent wings. Ducks press cold breast to breast. The bloated body of a swan sweeps downstream and its beautiful neck drags under, slaps thickly on the rocks. It's called The Water's Coming. I am speaking to you from the bottom of a well in the dry season. I'm here to feel the wet dirt, smell the iron residue of hard water. My arms are turning to rock, to snake flesh stiffened in its coil. You may ask me why I've come. I am afraid of fire. Did you know a willow sapling has sprung from my spine? It doesn't know how deep this well is. I am speaking this for you in case you are worried. It's been a busy day. This sapling's not going to make it. I am wearing your sweater, the one with the black salmon knitted on it. I'm sorry, the boiled egg in the pocket has cracked. Did you know shell fragments glow in the dark? This dark, anyway. Love, leave off your searching, for the water's coming first, and then the fire. Sunday. He kicks me out of bed for leaving no crumbs, none of me. In front of the metro, a big man swinging his hips. The sun arrives late today and empties the sky. Last night we got high until the room stopped shaking. Oh, the way smoke settles on his mouth. At the market, strawberries are sliced and piled like little tongues. Last night I had tucked his feet in, touched his thighs. Sweet little tongues. The radishes have lipstick on their teeth. Tonight he will eat with another woman, a fragile woman who dislikes me. At home, 
bread, cream cheese, avocado, an 18th century novel. My herbs are wilting and pigeons live in the air conditioner. He will ask me back to him tonight and I, she will be at her apartment removing the pins from her hair. Following from Sunday, Monday. And sickness comes. It bats your head with greasy paws. You've missed the sun, it's out there now, the glass warm against your face, your broken face. For you had planned on riding, triangle seat wedged between your legs, white helmus bulbous on your careful head. It's so sunny now, and you aren't in the sun. That feeling when hands behind your face pull skin into your skull. The day is filled with federal custodians trying to contain leaks and other hierarchies of willful abstraction. Wanted you, you wanted to ride, ride past the street that's sputtering gas, the fire trucks dominoed there, sirens waking you in mourning. You believed they were coming for you in dreams you had pulled a trigger. Now your head won't let you enter the sun. When you awoke, the lazy cat had remembered his green-eyed catness and teased a mouse through the night. He offers it to you now. I've got two more to read. Um, they're both set in Montreal. This next one is called Hopes, and it was written in response to the 2012 uh, student strike that happened in Montreal in, in response to proposed tuition hikes. And um, the English department I was with there published a chapbook of responses to that, to that situation. And the, um, the first, that starts with a four-line epigraph from John Newlove from his poem Insect Hopes. What nonsense we talk, what nonsense we're told, what nonsense we are, but I wanted to tell you still how lovely we are. What nonsense we talk, we scratch names into smoked glass, tongue the caulk between the stones, hiss our lies through air conditioning. We scratch names into smoked glass, tongues speech torn, felted and furred. Lies hiss through the air conditioning, what nonsense we're told. Speech torn, felted and furred, we press our warm bodies into the walls, what nonsense. We're told what's written into drywall and plaster where we rub our beautiful bodies against the pockmarked paint, our bodies written into drywall, what nonsense we are. Under pockmarked paint, our bodies are ghosted rooms and emptied words. What nonsense we are. We're crab walking the hallways, faces gaped upside down through empty ghosting rooms. We plug water fountains with our ripped and bitten nails. We crab walk the gaping faceless hallways. We graffiti our genitalia into the ground. We rip out the water fountains, biting each other. Our bones grind through the escalators. We graffiti our genitalia. On the ground, we press red ears to the thrumming, the grinding of bones up escalators. We push our breasts against doorways, letting ourselves in. Red ears pressed to the humming red intestine of the building where the plaster's peeled off. We push our chests against the doorways, press our sweet, soft fingers into the red intestine of the building, the plaster peeled off. But I wanted to tell you still how lovely we are. Our hard, skilled fingers, nothing but caulk between the stones. But I wanted to tell you still how lovely we are in our grave and vital nonsense. Actually, I forgot there was one right behind there. So i um, flipping quickly back to the West Coast. And then I'll end again in Montreal. This one's called Fuse. And it, um, it, it's written in response to a potential medical diagnosis. The buoy for our crab traps, an empty milk jug, beige and hollow as an old bone. It begins in the sacroiliac, suffocated nerves, pain splintered down the leg. Dad idles the motor. I angle the pike pole, hook the jug. Hand over hand, the wet yellow rope, slow. 
ribbons into the lumbar vertebrae, ligaments thicken to bone. The trap materializes, crabs huddle in its black bars, bodies hardening in the light. Arthritis, but too soon, fire up the spine. Two rock crab, four hulking dungeness. Shaken from the trap, they skitter on the fiberglass, rust clods on white, like sediments of scar tissue curdling under the skin. Dad tosses the illegal females, marked by the broad arc of their abdomens, half the catch in the bright air, legs scuttling. As in similar diseases, nails may lift skyward. Dad cups a remaining body in both hands like a valentine, belly shell face up, claws tucked. The delicate, nodding cervicals are last to stiffen to stone. He smashes each crab on the gunwale, wrenches the exoskeleton in half, sand and guts dribbling over his fingers. Enclosing spondylitis, or bamboo spine, pretend this form is not the body's own. It's swifter, kinder than boiling, turns shrill over the bay. I slap water on the blood and residue. The motor lingers, ossify, like a whisper. And this is my last one. Thank you again so much for inviting me and having me here. Cityscapes in mating season. Car alarm bird calls blast the dusk. Seagulls wheelie the burnt sky. Crickets stridulate their four types of cricket song, rioting the cement field under the Atwater overpass. The city thrums with it, ready to blow. Summer calling. Night fogs the windows with its warm breath. Fingers unbend from the blurry dark to trace crooked hearts on every pane. Like you, night has a lovely mouth. Death in his black dress plugs the parking meter at the end of my street. He'll stay as long as he damn well likes, but he still has to pay for it. His huge black engine idles. Squirrels throw themselves at its moaning flame. The engine runs its tongue over their small bodies, under their skin. Little skulls pop beneath tires on the road. Death counts his change to the penny. He likes the new ones, how they shine. Was it that moment of my mouth over yours, drawing our breath out? In my apartment, we engage in wonderful destruction, while below us the girl with the red dress and violent lips walks down my street and angels spark from her eight-cylinder rib cage, holy and obscene, rending red cloth in the warm night. The maples ablaze haul up their roots and scatter panic through the city like foxes with tails on fire. At Parc Laurier, in the rain, dogs lick quartz from stones, lick their owners with glittering tongues. Under the clouds, silence coagulates, catches in air vents and storm drains, and screeches choking through the metro. It takes my breath away, this ground. And in the park, I see Buddha's head on a stump, areolar pouches of blood dripping down his neck, the whole head red like blood and gleaming in the thick, wet air. A dame walks into a bar on the corner, all tall on the ruin of her long legs. The sidewalk drools on itself, giggles and wretches with civilized scents of terrier shit and apricot beer, the sweetness of deep fried meat and salt and the ocean. The ocean, I miss its smell, its muscular furred tongue. The dame stumbles home. Guilt curdles in the bar walls, then one night burns the dark place down. This city is full of beautiful boys, in doorways, on bicycles, long hair swept from delicate faces. But I keep finding the empty shape of you over my shoulder, lined in the earth rot under cedar boughs. Your body is what stretches in the spaces between cars that wait for the light. You've drunk half my beer, you bastard. I know it. Otherwise, whose lip marks there, and whose thumbprint on this frame? Thank you so much. The brief bio Tyrone Williams gives on his website reads as follows. Born at Detroit Parker Hospital, demolished, 
attended Crosman Defunct and Roosevelt Elementary, Durfee Junior High and Central High Schools, Wayne State University for the BA, MA, and PhD in 1972 to 1990, moved to Cincinnati to take his teaching position at Xavier University in 1983, shortly after completing paper on Frank O'Hara for Edward Hirsch's Contemporary American Poetry class. In 2000, he married Elizabeth Hamilton. They have two dogs and two cats. This snapshot of a poet, based not in books written, but in spaces occupied, buildings, campuses, cities yoked to perceptual and pedagogical experience, marked by and vulnerable to time and human action, is also a snapshot of a poetics that first accounts for, then consumes, questions, and transforms all givens. It is a poetics that asks us not merely to read the page, but to consider and to reconsider how we have been taught by race, by region, by physical, historical, and linguistic relation to encounter it. There is no average reader, Tyrone has said, adding, even less probable is the average reader of poetry. When he speaks of his pedagogy, he speaks of a kind of regression, of trying to get his students to shed years of reading habits, to return to a kind of play and wonder, not in order to romanticize poetry, but in order to reopen those alternative ways of engaging language closed off by public and or private education. Undergirding his own work is a similar lesson, that every grammatical marker is purposeful, that every torque of the language renders meaning problematic. In his poems, words, forms, and graphic spaces strut, jostle, break open, and dissolve, are made to contend with themselves as artifacts artifacted. So too, people, events, places vie for articulation, both beyond and alongside the measures that have dictated their reception. If, as Tyrone has suggested, all poetry has political effects, the effects of his poetry in particular rely on its encounter with readers across every ostensible demographic and disposition who are willing to experience a poem, as Tyrone might say, we already experience life and history through fleeting moments of clarity. Tyrone is the author of a number of chapbooks, including Convalescence, 1987, Futures Elections, 2004, Musique Noir, 2006, and Pink Tie, 2011. His full-length collections of poetry include CC, 2002, On Spec, 2008, The Hero Project, 2009, Adventure High, 2011, and Howell, 2011. Please welcome Tyrone Williams. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I, I kept, I was thinking, did I actually write that or think that? But I guess I did. Um, thanks, Chris, also for picking me up and enduring my coffee lane rapid conversation in the car. You survived that, thank you. And Cecil, thank you, too. and to all of you. So I changed my reading a little bit. Um, I was at the Chicago airport between flights and um, decided to get something to eat. Sat down at an empty table, and um, but it was not empty for long because this woman came along um, and said, "Do you mind if I sit with you?" Sure, Chicago. Um, <laughs> I would lower this a little bit. But at any rate, uh, completely un, for whatever reason, this woman decided to tell me her, at least part of her life story. Um, she was Iranian. She was a worker, still is a worker for Twitter. She started working for Facebook. But she is uh, a budding short story writer and a poet. Now, I had left my bags to go get something to eat. I don't know why she decided to tell me all this, uh, her life story. 
But then I realized that the bag that I carry is a OAWP bag from 2008. And so that perhaps was the reason why I got this story. But at any rate, the, the main point of this is that um, she was telling me that she wanted to write stories, but she could not figure out how to do so in her life, given her life. Um, so I don't know why I thought about that. She, and I decided to change my reading a little bit because of this bizarre encounter in a food court. <laughs> so I'm going to read some um, short, semi-new poems to start with, and then read a couple of things, a few things from How, maybe from On Spec, and then end with um, some new poems, too. All of the new poems are short, um, almost epigrammatic, as you'll see. Oh, I should also say, in this first poem, um, I think I'm pronouncing this right, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Ragnante is the name of Don Quixote's horse. <laughs> Pardon? Rosinante. Rosinante. Thank you. All right. All right. This is called Scraper. What steel stones isn't it? I E E G excludes itself. Invisible middle. Nothing. Not the bone of Barak sans Icarus, not the spirit of Pegasus, de Rosante, not a stopped up arrow mathematics, Abraham minus jihad equals animal plus sacrifice, not a bold, aper not a bold aperitif ex machina, can defogram and ed fix that planes the flat, heir to a fine finish. <coughs> a rapt, that's A-R-A-P-T. Oars at rest, backed up sloop, logged out, blank screen, Slack sail, hedge canoe, listless list, save for sleepwear, era, snore, sick, snort, sick, pitch, yaw, nth, boot, broken link, awake, hog tied to this hand held, ahoy, please God. Hello, Port. Barnacle and Patina. Call me drag. Anchor ab extra on the download. Tiresias 2.0, X and not then Y, abridged. Se sorry, sorry. Call update infected, attachment white cell count plateless, and own house mode ho home, wannabe hall. Call me fresh new coat of age. Swamping blind pig, fell footage, cracked monocle. Call me K, always on my way to some benighted castle. Uppermost prison, right of left. Unstamped stockade, illegible keys. Hunt per gondola for Richard Pryor. A 
couple of poles taking a piss. Man, this water sure is cold. Deep, too. <laughs> Versa Verso. Wash the shore with driftwood, the underreported remains of a skiff. The brain reportedly sinks into sand, a sand hill with sand castle, if not surfboard aspirations, the skateboard of the mind, being said as a pouring over, if not poured over, washes both brain and mind back into sand, out to see where, perhaps, some port, if not some salvaging porter. It's from on spec. Limbo, Kwansaba for Catherine Durham. Carried over was not what we carried out, what came up from the hold, what held, however tenuous, ashes to smoke, smoke to motion, the rhythm of evading low down mast, new hold plank, whip taut, Strung across the bow, the stern, under, away from, which belacks, arched toward. Waving back with the life preserver. Two times I do equals H minus plus H. Parallel lines that meet. Pearl necktie. Perforated wrist wristband. Parole ankle bracelet. Laying state. Pool. Pocket or drain. Hello. Monk. Monk. And this is part, can I get this lower even? Can I get this, this lower? okay. Mm -hmm. This is part six from the last poem in on spec called Shipyard. Rivets recovered from the bottom of the Arctic Sea covered the dock like thousands of virgin golf tees. Reported sinking has yet to surface. A few practice swings, but there's only one Granada, one Coca-Cola. Dabble in water, smudge sky. Degoggle welders, noiseless, patient. Thunder, gunships, or only the ugly groans of contorted bulkheads. This is part four of the section from on spec called Bloods. This is part four entitled No Contessas. Delta Stigmata, Bump Clubs, Fof Media, Everybody's Protest, Out of O, Canada. He hid in the crawl space under the burning house where she found temporary oblivion and respite as a nurse, a domestic worker, an unmarked engraver. My sweet lord, you know, he's so fine. My number two pencil, handset type. A member of the supporting cast in a serial flick, her body shrinks into a role shaped like a choice. 
that is an errant nightus she strings out of the gynoerotic buddy buddy. Hospital, hospitable, hospice. Quote, every day I sat in the library staring at a great work of literature that I could not read. My head was in the way. And that's from Siri Husfeld. So I'm going to read a little bit from how um, the section, actually a couple of sections. The first section, 1911, delayed forward. And this is a section on various books. Book of 13b. In three years, the next Jewish 30 years war will have begun to put asunder what war wrought. The eyes of march of empire will have begun to self-immolate Russian Jewish. Phoenix T. Spanish Russian Jewish O. San Francisco United Flight 2363 72599. 13C will have begun to be Mexican, Spanish, Russian, Jewish, engulfed in his own afterbirth. 1959, nay, Sandra Jimenez, Colombian, Mexican, Me Spanish, Russian, Jewish, begins to pre-board. She believes she has begun to pre deplane She plies forth, five the third, one of two anti-rejection drugs. Her sister, too, would have come to inner, inhale like the quick sanded down bone of spirit. Beside her with Adam, she, a priori, turns away to be reborn. The decade before, when she, should, when she shook forward of the ground, sutured asunder what it had not had a hand in three years earlier. Book of Mormon, kind in degree. Flarf not of my flesh, ye clothed and papered over wives, Ariande ribbed, multiply faithfully thanks to one who like them eschew promiscuity. Husbands he who husbands them, neglects he who in turn turns his back to turn an apron of bee leaf of several veils, if thine eye offend thee. A tornado in an eggshell, Book of Strummer. This is dedicated to Joe Strummer. Behind the billboard, thinking, Oedipus can know abdicates the anchor chair. I had killed a man, a man who looked like me, and nothing had happened. The mess, masked headline needs changing again, a new first. Aromatic appliques wafted up from freedom. To say a little bit of those distant salt mines arousing. Do your jobber. That stack of blank window treatments, makeshift mock-up shuffle, the lead at scale dementia. The blind factory book. The box outside the box. Swallow that, finger, fist, blooming out of, bandage whole where the suspension of all known laws. What is swallow? Crick spill. He do the media in different mediums. 
airbrushed heads riffing on their asses. Console decal, density a function of just the detailed mams. Besides we, close the captions, just last tomorrow. But brick, log, or bird, example, stands in lieu of place, of greener grass, a bald spot. Why is swallow then not a dog like all exemplar Greeks? A and E switching time times. Greek equals to whom, but when? Farm stock and crop data. Worth in the hand, worth plus in the heads. Plue perfect in the bushels of building after building, after building after building. Public domains, common goods. Good commons equals condensed. Bottle up marker correction. Obsolescent contradictions. Occam's co-ops, co-op headless chickens flapping frantically to catch the coup dot veal. The take takes. Put your wings in the air like your wings in the air. Bit cum halter, bite the clinchins. Rapid strides round the boundary at newsstand confectionery. Office, the idea of vegetables under glass. Seats to a chair on the Chicago Board of Trade. I'm just going to read the first poem in the section on Aunt Sally called Splint, um, which is really about, well, it's not really about Harriet Tubman, uh, Tubman sorry, but it imagines Harriet Tubman as escaping from her pursuers by agreeing to allow a conjure woman to turn her into a doll. Splint. A dead man made me doll, just so they'd know. Roots, she hums, in other words. Buried him then me in the self-same mud. Anything but bandana name. Dead man made, cackles, wiping my spit from her face, will do just so they'd know. 10 years of say-so, a decade plus of say-so, back to basket sky. A dead man said, me, Dow carry, on carry, off Harriet, Ross, just so they'd know. Humming, 19 years before wood, would feel as felt. Hand over my gun, gun, I say. What will will no longer be? Handed bandana, pipe and grin. Aunt Sally, what think? <coughs> this is one of the seven profiles of Aunt Sally, and I didn't realize this was not clear until um, Alden Nielsen told me he didn't. He finally understood what this poem, these poems were about. Um, this is a text poem, um, all seven profiles. That's you all here. So I'll just, I'm just reading profile seven. Five thumb, two thumb. Seven thumb thumb thumb, six thumb, four thumb thumb thumb, six thumb thumb, three thumb thumb, 
Four thumb, thumb, thumb. Six thumb, thumb. Two thumb. Nine thumb. Four thumb, thumb. Four thumb, thumb, thumb. Eight thumb. Three thumb, thumb. Two thumb, thumb. Seven thumb, thumb, thumb. Two thumb. Yes, it actually spells out a message. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get my notes here. And let's um, more new poems. Um, I guess this poem is in some ways dedicated to Dana Ward. Um, I guess I need to say that before I read it. It's called. It's messianic time. <laughs> Dishonored and so honored. Anonymity and labor among the meddling crowds of mowed lawns, raked leaves, and shoveled snow. Our tierras, caught in thickest of crowns, try to free themselves by yanks, by twists, by turns, and so widen sliding sideways down the great chain link, right to right until waist level shrink into money belts, strapping us, the post troopadors, in and put me in coach restraints. Yes, we post up, push back, credit cards cutting snow into high and runway lines. Ticker tape collated, collated into white stripes, traffic control, serial readers. And when the money belts are finally unfastened, they drop away, impotent snakes no longer swallowing their own tails. What awaits us outside are uncles, Sam, Tom, etc. Cabin doors is never the future just tomorrow, as we step off, step down from our planes, step out of our pants, step into the rings, nay tiaras by way of our rust belts, lace up those poems and await posed bells. We see the sky and raise it. Per dream to have sent, and recent as recent as, tomorrow a thumb piano text. At risk per se, abbreviated ash, iotas cast as shadows, cast no spells. Orange cones, curtain rods, themselves spelled by them. Faith in faster than father travel, as though through travail, hysterical glass, blue declensions, vanish into a velocity. The N letter. Attila albino blood, sorry, let me start with. Attila albino blonde is a black, period that thinks Nigeria is in or an African-American women man. Of fig leaves, briefs, jockeys, and long johns. When the African-American thugs moved into the blacks only neighborhood, the Afro-Americans fled into their houses, shoving picks, pomades, Garvey flags, and Nehru suits into garbage bags. Suddenly, there was a knock, just one, at all the front doors in the cul-de-sac. No one moved. Get it, said the interesting narrative. One narrator opened his or her door, and all the other doors opened at the same time, like a prison. No one was there, though rumors persist that an old negress and colored man were seen hobbling hurriedly away, snickering and humming old gospel songs as they turned a corner. The Ugly Stick. 
Welling away into her arms went rubbery, phlegm already starting to cake as future snot, her blonde weave withering into a post-Jerry curl. She fell on blubbering ashy knees before a white sheeted bean pole, squeaky with Jordans. They put a cap sideways on his ass. Just three more. <laughs> Forty-six after Shakespeare. Condemn a public sorry, condemn a public property by dint of blood before am out. Yet out, yanked back, kowtowed to mine hysteric, cold cocked by mine asunder. Not yet out, mine eyes negate negation, and pursued as am pursue mine meat. Thine mate, nay help, around a blind curve, Ambersan of morti cum morti. But cut, cut corners, back, not out, for blood, mine back into it notwithstanding. Didn't make a dent in it, the public held. Brought up on charges, was to be indicted. Peers impaneled, nay mine peeps. Bipartisan Republic, charge to verdict, kiss the belt. Oops. Uh, I did the same thing too. I have more than two left. <laughs> Oops. It's catching. I have several left, <laughs> which is a safe four. A social sans socialism. Get thee to a job. Circumcised circumstance. The girl next door beheaded. I M H O, that's so L O A, lame, gay, towel headed. Debt, the new decade. Gold chain, patent letter, shoe. The Constitution is in the club. Take that hat off. Put a cap in your sass. Seasonal employment during the Arab Spring. I stand to reason. Beret that burqa. Between and inside the line is the problem. A boy with prospects. Chadri, the last frontier. The opposite sex drive, Ed. Democrat, Republican equals free will. Do we a do you do? Burn all flagships. Have you read the latest plantation? They stand to anthem. Speak near English, utilities not included. Ride shotgun. Recycle flotation strategies. Insider confessions to appointed ombudsman. Ice that anime down. Anchor, Ankh. Bowsprit and mast. The vernacular, a gentleman's sports coat, soaked, soiled for the sake of a lady's slip ons, clogs, mules, ends up in the back of a secondhand storefront as a vest, plus a pair of pants fit for a pixie, dwarf, troll, who will come like Pinocchio's nose, billowing like a narrow cast chest wrapped in the flag of a high taken for tall. Set net. A sea the homo sapiens among us soon evaporate, condense above as clouds, umbrella of meta. 
the humans left behind in cultures, Cro Neanderthals in vex caves of petri disbelief. Seas congeal, suspend bridges. What gets through stopped up ears. A hand overboard slows to a glove. A leg retracts. A production list for pyramid. The trade winds stage direction. Exunt tows the wake. Thank you all for coming. Um, this is the last poem. Um, in this poem, there's a picture of the Memphis strike, uh, strikers in 1968 holding up placards. I am a man, I am a man, a man. I don't know if you've seen that picture. Um, but you have to imagine that following this line. So I'll, when I do this, just say to yourself, I am a man, I am a man, I am a man. <laughs> this is uh, called Maroon. On the other hand, Real coup ad hoc about men running for exception. A once now nonce esquire. Briefly, a drawn shade. Wanted here. However, castaway shadow of the drowned. Warriors walking underwater. There, ashore, peppered with spent rounds. Thank you. My thanks to Tyrone Williams, to, uh, to Lise Gaston, both of whom defied closure in the readings. My thanks as well to the introducers and to the, uh, and to the audience. And um, thanks to our friends at University Press Books who are, who are here um, with books by Tyrone Williams. Buy a book and please stay, talk to the, uh, talk to the writers. Thank you, thank you for coming and come back, come back in January when the series starts, starts again. Okay, good night, please stay.